Yo, it's Big Ant, man. We back. Another edition of Urban Politicians TV, man. Had to come tap in out here in Fort Worth one time my boy Spirit Springer, man. Yeah. Hey, Spirit Springer, not Jerry Springer, dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got to know that's, that, that's a ring to it. He had some major cosigns with this street interview shit. And his slogan is, if uh, the streets could talk, they would be here. Yeah, man. Okay. Oh, God, okay. that nigga pay attention. Yeah, yeah, I'm tapped in, bro. I'm tapped in to, to the way, especially in Texas, bro. I got to stay tapped in with Texas. Oh, for uh, real. I, and you know, you got a very distinctive uh, intro video. Yeah. I ain't seen one like it. You got the, uh, you had Sippin' on Surd. Yeah. At first, the instrumental. Then you went to Want to Be a Baller. Real niggas know, yeah. And then you, uh, you got Trap Boy Freddy on there, you got Sauce on there, yeah. you got Flip on there, you got Yellow Beezy on there. Who yeah. else you got on there? Soldier Boy, Splurge. Soldier Boy, Splurge. Uh, Yayo and CJ. Yeah, Yizzle, CJ, y'all. Tap yeah. in with him, dog. Go subscribe to his channel right now. Sperry Springer on YouTube. Yeah. Tap that in, type that in, subscribe. And also go to Instagram and tap in, man. Nice. Uh, So... I really got hit hip to you off of real life street stars. Shout out real life. That was, yeah, that was the great. interview I see him and you know you got your boy. He he right here too. We gonna tap in with him in a second. My nigga uh, yeah, uh, I got tapped into both of y'all off of there, and I had end up right after that. Yo, uh, YouTube channel popped up in my algorithm. Where? So I instantly subscribed. You know That's what I'm good. saying? I was like, okay, let me see what he on, and I was like, okay, he got some shit going. Yeah. So uh, me. I came out here, I wanted to collab with platforms and artists out here in Fort Worth, me originally being from H Time. But, uh, so, you know, introduce yourself to the people, tell them exactly where you're from and everything like that, dog. Man, um, it's Barry Springer. Shoot, uh, I mean, I stay all around Fort Worth, bro. I mean, I've been, like, as far as, like, my whole time in North Texas, I stayed in the suburbs, I stayed in Arlington, Fort Worth on the east side. Shoot, you know what I'm saying? My daughter stays on the south side, like, so pretty much anywhere in Tarrant County, but originally I'm from Chicago, born, and I moved around a lot, and shoot, I, once I was in Texas, it's like, yeah. everything just like, your mind just start, you just, it's like a playground out here, it's like, get in where you fit in and figure it out, and niggas just like, yeah. looked around like, damn. It's superstars and like, rappers and all this shit, you around all this shit, it's like, find your place in it and for sure so how long was you in chicago for man like really like just through my like childhood like up until like i was like a kid like once i was getting into, like elementary school and shit okay good. and then from there it was just like back and forth till i was like it till i was like about a teenager like 13 14 like i, I was always up there and okay. i lived up there like a little a couple like a little bit in my like in my, like when I was like 21, you okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, shit, it was just always back and forth. Like I still go to Chicago all the time because that's where my whole family's from. Okay, I got you. Now I seen you on the flight out there before. Like I seen you get on the flight and go out there oh, and yeah. tap in. Yeah, I'd, so I be out there just like on like I really like lived out there. Like I look like that's yeah. my favorite. Place well, uh, what's up? What side of town you from out there? My mom's from the west side. My dad's from the south side. Okay. So like in my adult years, like I still be on both sides. Okay. But like more like in in my later years in life, I'd be on the south side like with my dad, like seventy fifth and Stewart, like that's like Inglewood and shit like that. Okay. But I mean, even just like in in the in the hundreds and shit, just mainly on the south side. But I still be on the west side. It's it's a big ass city, but yeah. I mean, I love Chicago. That's like the best place ever. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think Chicago only got the grimy and the grit in the street. They don't know that that uh, cause my cousin used to play ball out there. He told me how like. It's lit out there, like oh, it go yeah. down. It's nice, the shopping, oh. the vibes, and uh, especially the summertime. He say it's crazy, like yeah. parties, clubs. That he say what you know, big so you know with Sosa, with Chief Keep Sosa's shoulders, and you know the whole street movement is not the only thing that Chicago has to offer for people who don't know. Some people know already that Chicago is a city, city. Nah, it's really me. a city. Nah, this is big. Like, low yeah. key, no disrespect to DFW, but yeah. like, Chicago's as big as all of Dallas and Fort Worth combined. Like, yeah. as a city. Like, yeah. It's, it's literally looks like a Midwest New York. Yeah, it's looks like New York. A lot of people don't know that because we only see the drill. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We only see the videos and things like that. We only see the murder rate. 
but they don't know on a whole other side. Yeah, it's an escape. Yeah. Like what your what your people said about yeah. like summers in Chicago. Like yeah, bro, nothing beats a summer in Chicago. It's bro. Daytime parties, the food, everybody's every out. Day. Everybody's out. He told me they got a food truck festival out there. Oh, right, bro, all the food's cracking in Chicago. <laughs> For sure. For get, sure. you, get you Italian beef, man. Slide, slide to wherever you go out there. Get yeah. you Italian beef. For sure, for sure. So, uh, you got stepped out here in Fort Worth, man. Um, yeah. So, when did you finally just say in Fort Worth, man, let me get into this whole media thing? Like, it was a something inspired you growing up? Was it? Man, I was, I mean, I always been into music and creating, bro. So, like, since I was, like, in school, like, when I was playing football, I always had a camera. And then my senior year of high school, my, my parents got me a, a computer. That was like my first personal computer. Okay. And then I was just always, I always been the type to like, I'm gonna utilize my, the fuck out of whatever I get. So like with that, I've downloaded every software I could find that I didn't have to pay for. So I'm Photoshop, music video stuff, whatever, even animation stuff, I'm downloading all that stuff. So I was just doing that shit just for fun. Then I started making music, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Fast forward years later when I'm, I'm falling back from, it, from music because I have my daughter. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm st I still got passion for this shit. It's just I wanna, I'm just getting older and thinking differently. And then I look up and I'm like, damn, bro, I be around all these niggas, bro. Like, I'm, I be around. There's a lot of people that I interviewed and stuff that I knew before rap, or let alone I seen them or my niggas know them. And I'm just like, yo, dude, you don't know these people for no reason. And then just one day, I got blessed in somehow, some way. <laughs> I uh, ended up going to a concert, Ti, and. Uh, Yellow Beezy opened up for it. Trey the Truth opened up for it. Shout out Trey the Truth. I love Trey the Truth. Yeah. And um, I just, from that point on, like just being there and being on stage and just having the camera, I was yeah. like, yeah, bro, this is what I'm going to do. And then shit, a couple months later, I just started interviewing people that was on the, just anybody I could interview. Because you don't start just interviewing big people off top. Hell no. I, I, thought it, I thought I could do 15 interviews and then after I did 15, I could start reaching out to big niggas. And here I am and like, one probably like 150 plus interviews yeah i still can't reach out to big niggas i mean <laughs> like, i mean i can yeah. but it's not like they're gonna say well nigga you did this many interviews i'm gonna give you one like nah it's, yeah it's, it's a grind i'm not complaining though i'm with it i'm with the grind so it's definitely not as easy as people think it shit you know ain't what I'm easy at all <laughs> it's like you it's got, fun if you love it but it ain't yeah. easy See, and I think like going through it, like them times of getting turned down or let alone at the beginning, how like yeah. you wouldn't get no messages back. Like I think that's what makes everything like even more sweeter now. Cause like yeah. people hit me up to do interviews, yeah. let alone if I run into people, they like, yo, let's get one in. Yeah. And I just remember them days when like, bro, I didn't even have a phone for a period of time when I first started this shit like two years ago. And I, I don't even want to shout out the girl because, like, shit ended bad. But this chick, <laughs> this chick I was talking to, like, I was hitting all these people up off of her phone. Yeah. And she would, like, message me on Instagram and be like, yo, this person hit me. And she don't know who these niggas is. Like, yeah. she stay in the country. She don't even, like, really listen to these niggas like that. Yeah. She's like, yo, some guy named Yellow Beezy hit you up. I'm like, yo, where's he at? My fucking, what'd he say? Yeah. And shit like that. And I just remember days like that, bro. Like, yeah. So who was your first like interview that you think, or first person that tapped in with you, that kind of like stamped you as far as okay, and I mean you gotta value every interview, even the smaller people who started with you in the beginning. Which one would you say is the one that's kind of like okay, this person right here was like the first one that hit me up and it meant like oh, okay everybody fucking with me. Actually hit me up yeah. was. Uh, or you hit them first and they were they came back and got with you. Well, the first big interview I ever did was Yellow Beezy, but okay. that was before Yellow Beezy blew up. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. It's still big though. Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah. this is like, he's he's popping out, like we know who he is, but yeah. he's mainly like strip club music. This is like Yellow Beezy, doesn't have 100,000 followers yet. Okay. He's known for trapping and designer, like that was his big song back then. I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. you know, it wasn't all the like the love and melody shit that yeah. it's, it's become, but like, you know what I'm saying? So like for me, you know, it was just automatic to reach out to him. Yeah. So when I got the chance to interview him, like me actually kind of having an idea of him and that's the big difference in doing interviews when you actually a fan of a motherfucker right. or you really have a lot to talk about you got like a real conversation so like we did we did it with him and that shit just that like it just took off i didn't have a lot of subscribers or nothing it just blew up overnight and then after that shout out yellow Beezy, but like after that um 
C Struggs, the fat crit out here. RP C Struggs. RP C Struggs, real nigga. Out. Solid nigga had that flow, man. Yeah, he's, he's rest in peace. Yeah. He's he's the first like big rapper to ever hit me up and reach out. Like he seen something I posted of him. Okay. Cause I do the video compilations and shit. Yeah. And he he hit me up and said, y'all fuck with that list. Uh, yeah. Shit, pull up on me. And so I, that's loud. I pulled up to the trenches. Yeah. yeah, shit, we shot a classic in the trap. Oh, God. That's what's up, man. Rest in peace, C. Struggs, for real, dog. Oh, for real. For real, for real. So, C. Struggs is a real nigga, man. Yeah. Positive, dude. And, yeah, man, you know, with Yellow Beezy, man, um, what was crazy with me with Yellow Beezy, the main thing that used to stick out with Yellow Beezy with me early on, Yeah. It, it just stuck with me. And it wasn't even a big deal. Like, I don't be on designer clothes. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I remember when that nigga was like a... Uh, Nigga, we ain't wearing Gucci no more. That shit trash. I so say it's like it's played out or something. Didn't he say something like that in the interview? Nigga said something. I don't know. Yeah, it was like he, he was talking about the because everybody boxed him into the designer. Well, shit, well see, not it was Gucci because at that point in time Gucci had fell off. Oh, okay. Some people might not accept it, but for a little bit, yeah. when like I guess like twenty twelve, because I keep up with what what's going on. You know, we got to we follow a rap. We got to keep up what's the latest drip and yeah. what all the rappers got to go buy next. You know what I'm saying? But like. I remember he said um, he wasn't rocking with Gucci no more. It was done. Yeah. And uh, or he said the brand was done. And they did have a way, a time where they felt like they were at the bottom because Balenciaga started hitting the the Margiela started hitting the other yeah. the red bottoms was hitting heavy. So niggas started putting Gucci yeah. down here. So that it just stuck with me when he said that. And I really thought Yellow Beezy was older. Oh, where? I thought he was older at that time. Hey, man, Trap Boy Freddy, like, yeah. I was, man, you know, we tapped in Houston. We listened to all of them niggas. We listened to Yellow Beezy. We listened to the Trap Boy. We listened to Mo3. Yeah. Of course, the Doros, when they hit. Yeah, he, I don't know if they people know out here in DFW area that we listen to y'all shit in Houston <laughs> heavy. Because I know sometimes they kind of think like we don't, but. We be, like, we know Texas listen to Texas, but like, I yeah. think out here we still look at it like we think that Houston probably be feeling like they still like big bro and probably don't even be pants. Hell, nigga, y'all shit. shit gotta, dude, y'all get a whole fucking segment in our clubs, especially that 08, 09. Oh, yeah. You might hear 10 devil songs in a row. That's in a crazy. row. And they gonna throw a beat king in there, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. he got the sound like y'all and shit out here, but like. Nah, nigga, we never had a problem with Dallas. We in that bitch doing all the dances and everything, yeah. bro. For real, for that real. Was yeah, that was the wave. That was the wave. And then, you know, Trap Boy Freddy, uh, we jamming that, bro. I still, that day of Dear Father by Trap Boy Freddy on that, uh, like, two mixtapes ago, I think. Yeah. That Dear Father is still, like. Shout out Trap. Shout out Trap Boy Freddy, man, for sure. 